Hey everybody, Mr. Mark back with you again. We're going to look at the second optional part of the Analyzing Simple Harmonic Motion assignment, where we're going to attempt to translate our, our position time graph rather into a graph of velocity versus time. So the thing that we have to remember mathematically is that the velocity is the rate of change in position with respect to time, which means it's the slope of the uh, position time graph. And then later on, the acceleration is the change in velocity over time, meaning it's the slope of the velocity time graph they're about to create. So the first thing we're going to do is we're just going to look back at the graph from the first part, the position time graph. Um, so back over here. Um, and this should be annotated with the positions and then minimum and maximum velocities and things like that. So over here, all we're going to do is we're going to take those minimum, maximum, and zero velocities, and we're going to plot them on here. So for instance, our object started out with no velocity, it was initially at rest. So that would do something like that. And then at one second, it had its maximum positive velocity, so where it reached equilibrium for the first time. At two seconds, it reached a maximum positive displacement, so it stopped again back to zero velocity. And then at three seconds, it was back to equilibrium, was moving in the opposite direction. It had a negative velocity, so a maximum negative velocity. And then at four seconds, we're back to our original starting conditions where the thing was back at rest. And so we can kind of continue that pattern. It goes rest, positive, rest, negative, rest, biggest positive velocity, back to rest, biggest negative velocity, so on and so forth, kind of like that. So if we draw a smooth curve, kind of connecting all those points, it doesn't have to be perfect. Don't try to freehand it all at once. Take it one segment at a time. You will get a graph of velocity. So where the slope of the first graph was zero, where it was flat, that's when our velocities are really, really big. And then when the slope of the graph was um, excuse, zero, when the slope of the graph is really, really steep, that's when our velocities are really, really big. And so plotting that gives us the opportunity now to study the acceleration in terms of the rate of change in velocity. So the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to go through and we're going to figure out when is the acceleration zero. So the acceleration, again, is the change in velocity over the change in time. So the question is, where is the velocity not changing? Where is the slope zero? So the first time that that's true is going to be at one second. So when the graph goes from up to down, it's got to flatten out in between. So if we did a best fit line, excuse me, a tangent line at one second, that tangent line would have a slope of zero, meaning that's where the acceleration is zero. The same thing is going to be true down at three seconds. The graph goes from down to up in between. It's got to flatten out. So that again is where the acceleration is going to be zero. So basically at all these inflection points, all these points where we have a vertex, if you will, that's where the acceleration is going to be zero. So if you look back at our position time graph, those should be the times when the object is at equilibrium. And so we know that at an equilibrium, the forces are balanced. Going back to our first graph. One second at equilibrium, that's when the acceleration should be zero. Three seconds, it's at equilibrium. That's when the acceleration should be zero. So from a velocity time graph, like this one, we just have to look at the slope of the velocity graph. Wherever it's flat, that's where the acceleration is going to be zero. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to figure out when does this thing have a positive acceleration. So again, the acceleration is the rate of change in velocity versus time, so that's when it's got a positive slope. So from zero to one seconds, it's got a positive or upward slope. So that's a region where the acceleration is positive. So I think the directions just say to highlight that. It's kind of hard on the whiteboard. 
from one to two seconds, the slope of the velocity versus time graph is negative. The velocity is decreasing going back towards zero. That's a negative slope, so negative acceleration. Negative slope, negative acceleration. So the next time that the acceleration is positive, that this thing has an upward slope, is after three seconds. And it's got a positive or upward slope all the way to five seconds. So we would highlight the region between three seconds and five seconds like that. Between five seconds and seven seconds, the slope of the velocity graph is negative. It's positive again between seven and nine. And then the last segment where it's positive is that little tail at the end between 11 and 12 seconds. So again, the slope of the graph of velocity versus time tells me the acceleration. So I just look at the slope and tell if it's positive or not. Positive slope, positive acceleration. Negative slope, negative acceleration. Now the next part is write SD next to all the intervals where the object is slowing down. Slowing down does not necessarily mean negative slope. Slowing down means our velocities are getting closer to zero. So we need to think not just the slope, but also the directionality. Is it getting closer to zero or further away from zero? So during the first segment, zero to one second, the velocities are moving away from zero. So this is the object speeding up. Between one and two seconds, the velocities are coming back down towards zero. So between one and two seconds, our object is slowing down. Between two and three seconds, it's a negative slope, but it's a negative slope because it's speeding up, going away from zero, in the opposite direction, or the negative direction, down in this case. And so between two and three seconds, our object is going faster and faster and faster, just down instead of up. So the next segment where the velocities are getting closer to zero is between three and four. And so that's a negative, excuse me, positive slope, but it is slowing down in the downward direction. So it's still moving down, but it is slowing down. Then it turns around again in four seconds. And so during that interval, it's slowing down. Between four and five seconds, it's speeding up again. Velocity becoming more and more positive. Between five and six seconds, the thing is slowing down. Between six and seven seconds, the velocity is moving away from zero, so it's speeding up. Between seven and eight, they're going towards zero, slowing down. Nine to 10, slowing down. And then 11 to 12, slowing down. So here the trick is, is that mathematically, we need to understand that the acceleration is the slope of the velocity versus time graph. So not so much in physics one, but in future classes like AP Physics C, you need to have a better handle on understanding mathematically how the acceleration and velocity relate to each other and then to the position time graph. So, um, not 100% something that we absolutely have to know in physics one, but it will help you in future classes. Till then, ta ta.